In this lecture, we will be talking about cells to tissue in our body organization unit. Um, we'll focus on how cells are organized into tissues, and there are four main tissue types. We will address each one of those, and we will also talk about the function that each of those tissue types do in our bodies, what they're used for. So let's get started. There are three types of muscle tissue, cardiac, smooth, and skeletal muscle cells. Cardiac muscle cells are Y-shaped and they have a central nucleus. They are striated or striped. Smooth muscles can operate on its own without the brain telling it to. Smooth muscles are connected to each other. Skeletal muscle cells are cylindrical shaped and are striped. They can sometimes contain several nuclei. Muscle tissues have the ability to contract and relax. This allows us to move. You can control your skeletal muscles. Most skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles, which means that you can control them. When smooth muscle contracts, it narrows. Skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles, which means you can control these muscles consciously. They cover your body and give your body its shape. These muscles work all the time making tiny adjustments to keep you upright and maintain your posture. These muscles also help hold your bones in the correct position and prevent your joints from dislocating. Skeletal muscles will also produce heat which creates your body temperature. These muscles are involuntary muscles and they work all the time to keep your heart working. Cardiac muscles contract to squeeze out blood of the, out of the heart and relax to fill the heart back up with blood. Smooth yeah. muscles can be found in your blood vessels, digestive system, and in your eyes. It changes the size of your pupil in your eye depending on the amount of light there is. Smooth muscle can operate on its own, which makes it an involuntary muscle. These muscles are arranged in layers. Each layer runs in the opposite direction of the last. This allows the muscles to contract in all directions. This makes it possible for smooth muscles to move food down your digestive system. These muscles are called smooth muscles because they look smoother than other muscles. Structure. Nervous tissue makes up your brain and spinal cord. There are three types of structure of the nerve cells. They are arm-like structures. Axons that send information away from the cell body. Dendrites, they receive information from other neurons. The cell body contains the nucleus. Nerve, nerve cells process signals called impulses that get sent out through the body. Type. The nervous system consists of two kinds of main cells, neurons and neuroglia. Neurons create nerve impulses that transport information around the body. We transmit electrical signal from and to the brain and spinal cords. Neuroglia have multiple use but don't transmit information. Instead, they take care of the neuron cells. The spinal cord receives information from the skin and muscle sensory receptor. Then it sends out movement instructions. Functions of the nervous tissue include acting as a sensory input. All living cells have the capability to react to stimuli. The nervous tissue is made up of numerous nerve cells. The spinal cord receives information from the skin and muscle sensory receptor. Then, it sends out movement instructions. There are three types of loose connective tissue. Those three types are areolar, adipose, and reticular. Out of these three, areolar and adipose are the most active. Areolar and adipose usually stay together. Areolar and adipose are located in blood vessels, nerves, and ducts. Inside the connective tissue, there are fibroblasts, collagen, cells, and elastic fiber. Their job is to wrap and support the organs stay together to make a good structure. They also support the blood vessels in the same way as they did in organs. They commonly do the effective wraps around the glandular structure, hair follicles, blood vessels, nerves, and others. Two types of dense connective tissue are found, which is dense irregular tissue and regular tissue. Dense irregular tissue is contained in collagen, elastic fiber, and they are running all different directions in plane. Dense regular tissue are contained in tendon. It's opposite from irregular type. They are running in the same direction in plane. 
Irregular types are required to repair and maintenance of the matrix. And the regular types have big tensile force that resist the pulling force. The bone tissue is kind of connective tissue. Bone tissue is a major structural and supportive tissue in the body. Bone tissues are mainly made of cells called osteoblasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts. There are two different types of bone tissue. One is compact and the other is spongy. The bone tissue supports organs, muscles, and soft tissues. It also protects vital organs such as the heart. The bone tissue produces white and red blood cells and also stores minerals. The cartilage tissue is an example of connective tissue. It is a whitish, co flexible connective tissue. Cartilage tissues are divided into three types, hyaline cartilage, fibral cartilage, and elastic cartilage. This tissue has the functions of connecting bones together and acts as a barrier that keeps bones from rubbing against each other. This type of connective tissue tends to develop and repair slower compared to the other connective tissues. It is found in joints, the rib cage, ears, nose, throat, and between the spine. Blood tissue contains three types. The red blood cells, which we call erythrocytes, the white blood cells, leukocytes, and platelets which we call thrombocytes. All these cells give an important role in our body. The red blood cell is made out of hemoglobin, and this is made the red colored. The main role of the red colored cell is to deliver oxygen. The white blood cell helps us kill bacteria outside our body. 55% of the blood tissue is filled with plasma. In the plasma, they carry the solid individual cells, the platelets. Platelets are colorless, irregular shaped fluid. They help cloth wounds, cuts that we get. The five previous slides were some examples of the connective tissue. The loose and dense connective tissue, bone tissue, cartilage tissue, and blood cells. All these different tissues work in various ways, but are all considered types of connective tissue. Why? This is because they practically connect the whole body. For example, blood cells carry oxygen through our body, keeping us alive. Epithelial tissue covers the entire surface of the body. They are made from cells that are closely packed together and arranged in one or more layers. The tissue is made to form the covering and the lining for the inside and the outside surfaces of the body. Epithelial tissue can be classified by the number of layers it has. If an epithelial tissue is one cell thick, it is called simple epithelium. If the epithelial tissue is more than one cell thick, it is called stratified epithelium. Here are the terms we are going to use today. Squamous, cuboidal, columnar, stratified, and simple. This is what they look like. Stratified and simple explain the layers in the types of epithelial tissue. Types Simple squamous. It is in the air sacs of the lung. Here is just a picture of what it looks like. This is the type of epithelial tissue that lines the chambers of the heart and helps us breathe in oxygen and out with the carbon dioxide. It also lines the veins and arteries. Simple cuboidal. It is in the kidney. Each individual cell is kind of cubic shaped, but together they look like a pool noodle. Simple columnar. It is in the intestine right there on the body. Like the name, they kind of look like columns, thin and long. Pseudo stratified ciliated columnar. Pseudo means false, so this means that this type of epithelium looks like it has many layers, but actually it doesn't. Stratified squamous. This is the skin epithelium. It helps protect inside tissues. The functions of the epithelial tissue includes to regulate the body temperature. The epidermis does this. Abarians, parasites, and things that are harmful to our body, discard waste, lines up among the alveoli, simple squamous, gather information about the surroundings, and makes vitamin D. Finally, the human heart. The human heart is a great example to use of an organ that includes is composed of all the tissue types. We've already talked about cardiac muscle and the role that it plays in the human heart, but the other three tissue types are also present. 
For example, epithelial. It helps protect the heart. It's aligning on the outside, aligning on the inside of the valves, and it also protects the heart valves and chambers. On the inside, it's called the endocardium, that layer of epithelial tissue. Nervous tissue, of course, is very important to the heart because it tells the heart when to pump. Can you imagine how awful it would be if you had to stay awake all the time to tell your heart to beat, beat, beat? That would be crazy, right? So the cardiac muscle is involuntary, which means that the nervous system, the brain, automatically sends messages to your heart when to beat. And then also connective tissue is uh, very important in the heart. It makes up the pericardium, which is the sac that the heart is in in your chest cavity. Um, and it protects the heart. It also connects it or anchors it to the surrounding tissue so it doesn't kind of move around in your chest cavity. And it also keeps the heart from overflowing with blood. So those are the four tissue types and an example of an organ that demonstrates all four of them. And I hope that you've learned a lot about the different tissue types and their functions. Now on to organ systems.